My name is Melanie. I live in San Antonio, Texas, and I follow the keto diet. So let me turn this camera just a little. So this morning when I got up, I turned on my lamp, my little diffuser. Ever since the pandemic started, um, we got to have some self-care because my anxiety has been through the roof. And so turning on my diffuser, and the combination of lavender, eucalyptus, and mint, it just sets the tone in my morning and it helps me to reflect, be grateful, and just try to calm my nerves a little bit. So I made my morning coffee and um, I always use Folgers crystals for my coffee. I've been using Folgers crystals now for almost a year. I went to Italy last summer and I fell in love with their lattes over there. And so when I got back home after many trials and errors, I came to the conclusion the best tasting coffee for me was Folgers Crystals. It reminded me of the flavor that I was missing from Italy. So I gave my Ninja Coffee Bar to my mom and she thought I was crazy until she tried it. Now she likes Folgers crystals sometimes also. So anyways, I take two heaping teaspoons of Folgers crystals and to that, oh, I dropped my list of things I'm gonna to talk to you about. Okay, so uh, I take the Folgers crystals, I mix it with three quarters cup of uh, steamed almond milk and I put in a half a serving of perfect keto chocolate collagen and then fill up the cup with hot water and that is my morning coffee and it is completely fine for my fast so I have learned in my one month being on keto that everybody has a different version of what they call fast um, some are really strict some are loosey-goosey I fall kind of in between. So what I think a fast is, um, is chewing and going over 75 calories. So my coffee in the morning, and I'll insert the macros at the, you know, throughout the video so you can see, but my morning coffee is not above 75 calories and I'm not chewing on anything. So I'm working up towards an 18 hour fast. So I had my morning coffee and then I went on my morning walk. I walked two miles today and I am in a challenge. So if you don't follow Christy Davis, you need to. She is a wealth of information. If you are on the keto diet, if you're thinking about being on the keto diet, her whole family is on the keto diet and they have lost a ton of weight. And she is so cute and she is so knowledgeable and positive. And she has a Facebook group that is just such a positive and nice community. And there are no keto police and she's not joking around. She is Southern and she has no problem kicking anybody out who starts becoming a keto police because they're, everybody does their own version of keto. So Christy, if you're watching, thanks, because I appreciate it. I don't need anybody policing me. So anyways, for the month of July, Christy Davis group on Facebook, it's called All Things Keto with Christy, um, is 31 miles in 31 days. So I made a little chart. I can insert it here, but, and it's just what it means. 31 miles in 31 days. So since I walked two miles today, I can cross off two miles on my chart. And I love it because it's attainable. It's an easy goal. It's an easy challenge. And the goal is very attainable. So I'm really excited about it. Okay, so I'm working towards an 18 hour fast and what keeps me going through my fast are exogenous ketones. Let me take a sip. So the number one reason 
why I drink these ketones is because they most definitely 100% curb my appetite, suppress it completely. So, um, and that's what I love about them. Because if you drink ketones on their own and you keep eating, you know, a non-keto, non-low carb diet, you're only going to be in ketosis for about three hours. So it, I really don't even use it to get in ketosis, but be, because, do, 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 because I am following a keto diet. So my body is sustaining a, a level of ketosis. And then with the ketones, I'm already adding ketones to it. But what I love is the appetite suppressant out of it out of it that's my favorite part so anyways i'm working towards an 18 hour fast and i will be breaking my fast around 11 30 12 30 and for my first meal of the day so it's summer break right now so what i thought would be interesting excuse the messy hair this is summer hair for a teacher and there's no makeup i try really hard not to wear makeup during the summer so anyhow what I'm going to be doing because it's summer is every Wednesday I'm going to be trying two new recipes. There are so many recipes out there and so I thought it'd be fun to try two new recipes every Wednesday. So when I break my fast today, my first meal of the day is a sweet omelet. I got the recipe from Keto Connect and I really don't like the name sweet omelet so I'm going to I'm calling it a fluffy crepe and it has it's very very keto friendly and it has raspberries in it so I'm a little excited about that and then my second recipe that I'm gonna try tonight for dinner and I will be feeding this to my family is a Greek grilled chicken or Greek chicken not grilled chicken it's a Greek chicken keto Greek chicken sorry and i got that recipe from a mom that i follow on instagram and tiktok her name is mandy mitchell and it looks so good oh it has my favorite cheese feta cheese in it so anyways um please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and you'll get to see what i eat in a day including oh, a special dessert that oh my god it is so so indulging but I'm gonna keep that for a surprise because I literally save enough room in my macros so that I can eat this every night and I'll give you a hint it involves perfect keto peanut butter cookies those are the best cookies I have ever tasted now listen carefully I'm not talking about the best keto peanut butter cookies. I'm talking about the best peanut butter cookies I have ever tasted in my life. They are insane, insanely good. If you love peanut butter and you like a soft cookie, you are missing out. And right now, Perfect Keto is running a 4th of July sale. I'll leave a link to their website and I just placed an order back on Sunday and I'm kicking myself right now because I really wish I knew about the sale beforehand, but I was running low and I didn't want to take it. I do not want to run out of these cookies. I subscribe to these cookies. I've tried their nut butters, their bars, their collagen, and these, and I've tried their other cookies and they're good. They're real good really good but they do not compare to the peanut butter cookies whoever developed that recipe they get a gold star from the second grade teacher because those are the best cookies in my life that I have ever tried oh my god they're good I think about them all day <laughs> so stick around to see what I eat in a day and I'll give you my honest a review of what I think about the recipes and thank you for watching don't forget subscribe and hit the bell notifications bye
So this is my first meal of the day. It's a sweet omelet. And to start off with, I'm separating two eggs, the whites from the yolks. And on my second egg, I kind of messed up. It didn't break exactly the way I wanted to. So unfortunately, some of the yolk got in with the whites, but that's okay. It was still very delicious. And I had to separate it with my hands. So I'm just whisking the heck out of those egg whites, trying to form some type of soft peaks. Next, I'm taking one quarter cup of heavy whipping cream, measuring it out, and I know, pouring it into another measuring container. And I'm taking one packet of Splenda Stevia. I really like this brand because they only use the Stevia leaves. It's not bitter at all, it's very sweet. So I whisked the heck out of that. Now I'm taking my egg yolks and I'm gonna go ahead and beat those. Oh, and I'm turning my stove on. I want my pan to get preheated, so I'm just loosening up the yolks, beating them. And to those yolks, I'm gonna add a few things. So the first thing I'm going to be adding is coconut flour. I'm taking one measured teaspoon of coconut flour. You don't need much. I have learned with coconut flour, less is more. It expands a lot. I'm also taking some cake batter flavor and some pure vanilla extract. Right now, it smells so good and it's not even cooked yet. Okay, and I was just getting a whisk. I needed a little whisk. The bowl was way too big, but that's okay. So now it's time to incorporate my whipped cream. I needed my glasses. Incorporate my whipped cream. I have a tiny little spatula, so I was getting that out. And I'm also incorporating my egg whites. See, they didn't really come out too, too meringue, if that's a word. So here I am carefully folding in everything because I want as much air as possible. I'm really looking for a big fluffy crepe. Is anyone else a volume eater if it looks big? I just wanted something that looked huge. So now I'm taking one measured tablespoon of butter and I'm gonna drop it in my pan so it can melt. That's a butter bell. If you don't have one, I can link it down below. We bought ours off Amazon, we love it. We always have perfectly softened butter. So now I dumped everything into the pan. Now this pan is set kind of at a low setting around number four. I have this time elapse going really quickly, but this whole process actually took about five to six minutes because I was taking my time. It was the first time I was making it and I really didn't want to burn it. I didn't understand what would happen if I had it on too high of a heat. So. There you can see, I'm just moving the egg base around, trying to get a solid base. This took some patience. I definitely could not do this during the school week, but it would be a great treat for the weekends. So there you can see of the fillings that are getting ready to go in. I'm telling you, nope, don't flip it yet. You're still not ready. Okay, so now I'm ready to flip, and it actually took two spatulas to flip this. It was a little tricky, but I did it with a few errors, and honestly, it didn't make a difference on the taste. So here I have 15 Lily's Semi-Sweet Chocolate Chips. Exactly, 15, and five raspberries. And that's going to be my filling for my fluffy sweet omelette. Now I'm just moving things around and I'm going to flip or fold over my sweet omelet or my fluffy crepe, whatever you want to call it. And getting my plate ready. This was a little tricky, but it was successful. No breakage. Ta-da! And because I think it needs a little something else, I'm adding two servings of sugar-free whip topping. So here I am showing you when I'm breaking my fa fast. And here's my first bite. I wanted to make sure I got everything. Chocolate, raspberry, cream, and the omelet. It's very hot. Look at that, though. It's dripping with chocolate. 
It was so good. And here are the macros, and I'll see you later. So it's dinner time and I'm using this Greek seasoning. I forgot the name of it, but I'll put it down in the description box below. So I have one and a half tablespoons of melted butter in a frying pan. And I'm just taking three chicken breasts that I've cut up into strips and browning them. I just want to do a quick brown. I'm seasoning both sides and over off to the side I have an oven pan waiting. The oven is preheating at 375 right now. And I just want to do a quick brown. It smells so good. This meal is very versatile. I can see making this for one person or for 10 people. It really is adaptable and it's an easy weeknight meal. So here's a better angle. I'm just browning my chicken. It's still raw in the middle, but I'm placing it over in my roasting pan time for the next batch so i'm moving my butter around i'm going to add a little more of that greek seasoning and i'm going to add the remainder of my butter that's one and a half tablespoons so a total of three tablespoons of butter but since three people are eating this in my macros, I'm counting it as one tablespoon of butter for myself. So I'm adding my the rest of my chicken. And I'm going to season that up, brown it. And then when it's finished browning, I'm going to add it over to my roasting pan where the other chicken is waiting. And that's just Himalayan pink salt that I added. I'm really being careful with the salt because olives and feta cheese are both salty so I really don't want to over season it too much and it did turn out perfect so here's all of my chicken now my chicken's not on here yet you'll see I'm making a makeshift barrier and I have measured out for myself four ounces of chicken so I really wanted this to be foolproof and I didn't want to overeat it. So I knew by making a barrier what I could eat and what my son and husband could eat. So I'm just adding some onions, not really measuring anything. I only put two little onion rings on my side. I put six olives on my side and on the other side, I really, I'm not measuring anything on their side. I'm coming in with six grape tomatoes for me. And then on their side, just however many until it looks right. And then I measured out one and a half ounces of feta cheese for my side. I love feta cheese and so does my family. So I just covered their side with feta cheese, no measuring. And everybody loved this meal. It's going to pop into the oven at 375 for 30 minutes. And you're going to see I'm serving mine over three cups of lettuce with just a couple of cut up pieces of cucumber. So see my side is all nice and separated. I'm going to take my big spatula and I'm just going to slide it on top of my salad. And that was dinner. It was so good. There's my macros. So it's after dinner and I'm pouring and measuring eight ounces of almond milk from Costco. This is just the unsweetened vanilla almond milk. Oops, I went over a little 8.3 ounces. Not a huge deal. Anyways, I'm pairing it with my favorite cookie this is the perfect keto peanut butter cookie there's two cookies in here i'm only having one tonight and that's gonna wrap up my night thanks for watching bye